This podcast is brought to you by Bird's Basement, the premier music dinner and supper club in Melbourne. And now, please welcome your host, entrepreneur and jazz guitarist, Albert. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Bird's Basement show. We are broadcasting live this evening. And um, we are on the stage of Bird's Basement. And this is a club where we are having some great musicians uh, all year round. Uh, the club has been open for two years now. And uh, we have some great news because from the end of this month, from the end of February, you are going to be able to actually uh, watch the acts playing at Bird's Basement live. So more about that very soon, but uh, watch that space. And this evening, you all know Sarah McLean. That's why you're here. But uh, in the world of podcasts out there, they don't all know who Sarah is. So we are going to introduce her and uh, allow people, the wider audience, to discover her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sarah McLean. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Ooh, long way up here. It is. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> I have to find Hi. my way through this maze. Of I know, bikes. maze of equipment, yes. Um, so, Sarah, uh, uh, can I tell your secret? You are from Tasmania. Yes, I am. Hobart girl, yes. A Hobart girl. When did you come to Melbourne? Uh, in 1995, four or five. I can never remember the year, but <laughs> one of those years. So, how did you start singing? Uh, I've had so many influences when I was little and um, I think foregone conclusion with parents who were talented and aunties who were talented with their singing and just so many um, uh, reasons that I ended up singing, I think. So your parents are actually musicians? Um, my father sings wonderfully well and he's, he's sung in many productions and my mother sings very well as well. It doesn't sing professionally but has a lovely voice. My auntie Trish, my auntie Heather, we all sing in our family. So, so it's, when uh, you were gathering in the family dinners and yes. <laughs> singing and then they... Pretty much, yeah, with my auntie Trish playing records, dancing around everywhere as well. And my grandparents were, were uh, singers as well, had, had fine voices. So, yeah. <laughs> so how did you get this idea that uh, you were going to turn this talent into a profession? Uh, I thought, well, when I was <laughs> playing in bands, when I was about... Uh, 18, 19, I thought, I want this to be my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the, the many influences when I was growing up. Um, and who were those influences? Oh, uh, gosh. Apart from your parents, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, gosh, they, they range from people like they're all, all rounder, as it were, for want of a better term. Uh, Fred Astaire, who I love and adore. Uh, I watched his, his movies as a, a little kid. Um, my grandfather put them on all the time. And uh, all the way through to... Jazz heads like uh, Mel Torme, who I think is, is amazing. And not so much a jazz singer, but a crooner in Bing Crosby as well. And all the way through to Sting, David Bowie. Um, such a, an eclectic, I have an eclectic taste. <laughs> and so you came to Melbourne in 1995, you said? Yes, and so four you, or five. And so you yeah. started playing in uh, Good Morning Australia with Bert Newton. I did in 1996, yes, yes. Um, That's how you started. It is. I actually, uh, one of my favourite singers and now a friend, um, Peter Couples, actually got me to sing on a song of his on Good Morning Australia. And I, I was a bit lucky um, because Deborah Byrne, the wonderful Deborah Byrne, couldn't actually perform that day with Peter. And so he, he and I had met and he said, would you like to sing on my song? I'll send you the original so you can sing my song with me. And so I did that and then Bert um, contacted me through his people and um, the producers got me back on the show on my own and I was on the show for eight years after that, um, every six to eight weeks as a regular on the, on the show. Yeah. Well done, that's wonderful. You all, <laughs> you all you. remember the Bert Newton <laughs> Thank show. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and um, I, I describe you as a jazz singer crossing over to R&B. Would you agree? Absolutely, yep. Uh, again, I was raised on, on jazz and all the classics, but pop as well. So I'm a jazz singer who also loves singing R&B and pop as well. Yeah. So the material that you sing, um, you do a few covers, but you write also your own material. I do, yes. Yes, I'm wanting to do an, an album of that later in the year and 
and um, we perform them live. We already have two albums, right? I do, jazz, yeah, all and covers. So, so the last one that you recorded, when was that? Uh, that's called The Heart of Me, and that was about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And the one before that was called A Song For You, which was about uh, a year or two before that. So, so the last uh, record, yep. uh, d what did you say? The, the Heart of the Me. The Heart of Me. Yes. So you... Uh, still promoting that? Yes, I am. I actually take it. It's here at Birds tonight mm -hmm. as well, but I actually Good. take it around with us, especially jazz festivals as well, which are fun to do. One of those are coming up this weekend. So, so you're touring all around Australia with jazz festivals and yes. various venues. Yep. But you have not yet gone beyond the shores of Australia. Oh, I have, but I haven't uh, gone to sing, no, to sing, not I'm, to perform. I'm obviously, I'm talking about yes. singing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but you, it is something that you would like to do. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. I think that's... That's a step I'd love to take in the next couple of years. Um, yeah, it it's definitely intrigues me, especially the New York scene. The New okay. York scene in London, I think, too. So can you describe the creative process? How do you go from uh, a blank page to having a song? How do you do it? I do it. It just it comes to me. It sounds a bit cliche, but it's absolutely true for me. I, it, ideas just come to me, and then um, uh, they come to me like poetry. Um, I actually think of a tune you, you, first. You, have, you do your own lyrics. Well. I do, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm listening. That's okay. I catch you. Um, so I, I actually write the, the music first. I actually think of the, the melody first and then I do the lyrics and think of some lyrics. But um, I also write songs down immediately. Like as soon as I'm singing a song, I make sure I, I either put it down onto a tape or... <laughs> tape, what am I in, the 80s? Um, I put it onto, onto um, an audio device and make sure that I retain it, because I, I think of songs all the time, so, yeah. So you're prolific, therefore. Yeah, I, I am now. I never used to be. It's, it's in the last probably 10 years that I've really been starting to write a lot. I'm wanting to consolidate all the songs I've written into ones I think are best for me and do an album of them later They're in the wonderful. year. wonderful. So you are going to be performing at Bird's Basement tonight, obviously, but then you have also a show in March. Yes. Another one in April. March 27th and April 24th, yes. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. but there are other shows in town that you do? There are other shows, yes. Um, lots of different venues. May I name a couple? Of course, why not? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Rising Sun Hotel in South Melbourne. And Dizzy's Jazz Club, the Lido Cinemas in Hawthorne as well. So I'm, I'm kind of sprinkled around Melbourne a little bit with my, my gigs. Well, that's what, as a local artist, that's what <laughs> you should be doing. That's true. And Port Ferry Jazz Festival this weekend as well. And so tell me, uh, the band that you've got with you this evening, yes. tell me about uh, uh, the, the guys, who are they? Absolutely. How did you meet them? Okay, well, Todd Sidney, who's um, on piano tonight, uh, he's actually my partner as well. Um, we met about seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, and he's a jazz pianist predominantly, but can play anything um, in my mind. Um, and he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful player. He's um, born, of course, on music as well, a very musical family. His father was John Sidney. Yeah. And, <laughs> was and John the family Sidney. here to support him, of course. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, fans. Oh, fans, thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, his, his father was John Sidney, who was a, a ventriloquist and a, a fantastic pianist um, in Hobart. He was quite, quite famous down there. So that's Todd and um, a very fine player. And Ivan Rosa on double bass. He's exceptional as well and um, wonderful Also spirit. from Tasmania? I don't know. Is he? I don't know. <laughs> but Todd's um, from Tassie as well. He's a Hobart man. I forgot to say that. So we were destined to meet. Um, so, yes, Ivan Rosa on double bass, G Gideon Marcus on drums. Um, I've performed with Gideon a few times um, and he's just remarkable and um, just a very relaxed, brilliant player. You know, I heard a funny story. I heard that uh, once uh, Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> came to watch your show. This is a funny story. And then story. asked you to meet afterwards. <laughs> And uh, you said no. You no, no, I, no, no, no. I didn't quite say no. Although I did, because I didn't meet up with him. He says no yeah. to everyone. But. No, no. <laughs> well, he he was actually at the Hyatt um, the Hotel. It was in 1999. It's going back. And um, yeah, and he was sat there with his his friends and colleagues, and and he only had soda water the whole time. So I think he must be he might not drink. I don't know. But he had about four or five soda waters in the space of three hours, and just sat there with friends and. Um, I had this lovely man, very tall man, afterwards say, hey, 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 man, Jerry, I'd love to meet you, man. I said, oh, okay. And I didn't realise they were going 
They were actually leaving. And I thought, oh, I'll just write out my set first, you know, around the corner. And he, he actually, uh, he had to leave. So I didn't realise that I hope to this day he didn't think I snubbed him because I didn't go straight away and meet him. So unfortunately, apparently he loved the band, man. <laughs> but I didn't meet him, unfortunately. And then you also had a similar encounter with George Harrison. Which we, who we met, yeah, he was... You met him, yes? He was, a, yes, he's one of my um, songwriting influences, actually, as well. So that was wonderful. And, and what happened? That was at the Hyatt as well, <laughs> a bit of a plug for the Hyatt. Um, we, uh, we were performing and I looked over to my left, and never forget it, and Barry Sheen, um, who's also not with us anymore, the wonderful Barry Sheen, and they were sitting there having dinner together. And uh, I just saw this man teetering back on his chair. I only saw Barry at this stage. And I was singing the song Something... Something in the way he moves. Um, for me, it's she, Keep but I say he. <laughs> Attracts me like no other lover. And um, there was this sort of teetering back. I thought, <gasps> and I, to this day, I don't know whether um, uh, Russell Smith, I don't know if they all knew that he was there at the time, but we played the song. And in our break, he came up and, um, and rested on my shoulder and didn't say much to me at all, but talked to the rest so of the Russell band. So Russell was there with you. <laughs> Yes, yes. Russell. Russell Smith, the drummer, and I think it was Barry Lester mm -hmm. um, as well. And it was, it was lovely. And he leant on my shoulder for uh, quite a while. It, it's like 10 or 15 minutes. It doesn't sound like a long time, but yeah, a beetle well, resting on your shoulder is good. With George Harrison, <laughs> it sounds like an eternity. And he said, are you guys on some other nice again? You know. So Sarah, <laughs> what can we expect from the show this evening? And uh, again, an eclectic mix. Um, what songs are you going to sing? Uh, uh, One Day I'll Fly Away, Randy Crawford, that's an example. Um, Fragile by Sting. Uh, uh, another, oh, My Valentine, which is a, a Paul McCartney tune. It's one of his ballads. And um, jazz, like uh, On a Clear Day. Um, yeah, just, just all sorts. Of, uh, again, a really eclectic mix of songs. So for the people in the world of podcasting, they want to, to find you, where would they do that? Uh, on Facebook? You yes. Have your page? Absolutely. I've got a website as well. It's so www. can you tell us uh, everything? Yeah. It's www.sarahmclean.com and the Facebook music page is Sarah McLean Music under and the Facebook. Yeah. The Twitter? Uh, Twitter. Yes, I'm on Twitter as well and that's just at Sarah McLean. It's pretty basic. <laughs> Twitter account. Wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah McLean. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the show too. She's going to be with you very shortly. Thanks so much, Thank Albert, you, too. Thanks to Birds.